Welcome to our presentation on detecting customer trends for optimal promotion targeting. We are Tamar Cohen Hilel and Georgia Parakis from the MIT Sloan School of Management, Sitara Borgian and Kiran Panchamgam from the Oracle Retail Global Business Unit, and myself, Leonard Bartman from the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. Before we go any further, we would like to start off by expressing our sincere gratitude for being selected as a finalist for the Innovative Applications Analytics Award. I want to say a big thank you to the committee for selecting us. Now, let's discuss the topic at hand. How can we help retailers target their promotions with the use of analytics? Most of us encounter targeted promotions daily. However, our own experience, most likely your experience, and certainly the experience of many customers, has been that most of these targeted offers are not for them. In fact, an article in the Wall Street Journal from early last year expressed that customers stopped opening all targeted emails, either because retailers were recommending irrelevant items or promoting the wrong items. Even though the number of retail emails went up by 15%, the Wall Street Journal mentions that customers opened 15% less of these messages. Clearly, retailers have to change their messages because they might be sending too many or irrelevant ones. Our goal is to aid retailers in solving this challenge. How should they target promotions to the relevant customers in order to boost their profits? Immediately, several other questions arise, such as how does a promotion affect the customer population? Or how can we leverage these effects to improve promotion targeting? Our intuition is to build a demand model that accounts for the direct effect of promotions, namely promotional price sensitivity, and the indirect effects of promotions, namely trends or word of mouth effects, after which we can build an optimization model that improves profits based on this understanding of demand. It is important to stress that we are the first to develop an integrated model that jointly describes trends in demand and uses them to target promotions. Trends have been used before, of course. In the analog age, trends were set by celebrities. Think of celebrity advertising, where a celebrity influences the image of brands or products. Since the digital revolution, trends are also being set on by online influencers. Think of fashion influencers who show their latest favorite clothing on social media or blogs, even showing where the product actually comes from. However, we can set the trend too. Any person has a level of influence on their social relationships. For example, ourselves. Say, Georgia, Setare and Tamar. Or Kiran, Lennart and Sajith. We can also affect the decisions that people make around us. In the example of fashion, the style of clothing that we wear might influence others in what they like. The question becomes, say we have this blue blazer, how do we detect and leverage the trend? Well, the first key question is how we can improve our demand forecasts by detecting the underlying trends. For example, visualized by this customer trend network. The second question is how we can improve our targeted offers by leveraging the underlying trends. For instance, by giving customer C a discount or maybe giving customer B a discount. To answer the first question, we propose a new demand forecasting model, one that not only captures traditional demand models, but also includes the effect of the customer trend. Traditional demand models are easily estimated through the use of transaction data. However, the trend model would be more easily estimated with access to social relationship data. Through the experience at Oracle, we have seen that social analytics is one of the most challenging areas for both retail managers and data scientists. Getting meaningful and actionable insights requires the right level of detailed social data, but often retailers do not have access to such data on social media platforms without paying tremendous fees, not even to speak of privacy issues. Instead, we show that we can estimate the traditional demand factors and the trend factor through the use of only transaction data. To answer the second question, we build a novel promotion targeting model that uses mathematical optimization to maximize profits based on our demand model. In this model, we want to decide on selling the right customer, the right item, at the right time, for the right price. 
the who, the what, the when, and the how. All the while we want to be obeying our sets of business rules, such as a limit on the number of promotions or fixed periods of promotion that the retailer has set. To solve these challenges, we take the following steps. Our first contribution is to develop a demand model that accounts for customer trends. This will be a predictive model that can capture standard demand features, such as pricing and seasonality. And our primary contribution is to add a detection of relationships between customers. Our second contribution is to build an optimization model that decides on how to target promotions. This is a prescriptive model that incorporates our demand model and uses it to determine who should receive promotions to maximize profit while satisfying several business rules. Finally, we contribute by applying our models to a real world data set from a large fashion retail client of Oracle. After describing the data using descriptive analytics, we will show that our predictive model improves WMAPES by around 3 to 15% compared to previous models, and our prescriptive model improves promotional profits by 3 to 10% compared to the current promotion policy. In the end, we will see that we are able to create graphs that describe how customers at different stores affect each other, such as in Ohio here which will allow us to show which stores customers should receive promotions, such as the stores that are linked in green. And that switching the promotion targeting policy improves profits by 3.7 to 10.6% in our back tests. With this overview, let's delve deeper. First into our predictive demand forecasting model. Say we have these different types of placers and we're interested in the demand by customers in the state of Ohio. What we will do in our model is we will group customers together. For example, low spenders at the Cleveland store, medium spenders at the Cleveland store, and high spenders at the Cleveland store. Not just for the Cleveland store, but also for the Columbus store and the Toledo store. And we want to look at how do these groups demand these different items. To understand this demand, let's try to understand the selling season. Let's say we have this blue blazer and we have customer A that comes into the store and buys the item in period one and we have customer C buying the item in period two. Then we argue that there might be a possible trend from customer A to customer C to purchase the item. Similarly, when customers B and D enter and buy the item in period three, they might be buying it because of a trend from customer C. And dependent on how far backward looking customers B and D are, the trend might even come from customer A instead. The idea here is Granger causality. The fact that customers can only influence or create trends to other customers who buy later. Now, we don't just have this data for the blue blazer. We also have this data for other blazers, say the black blazer, uh, where we can create a different graph of how the possible trends can look like. In this case, customer B bought in period two. And so the pattern that we see will be slightly different. Now, the idea of our method will be to layer these different graphs on top of each other, look where the edges are very thick, and that indicates that there's very frequently one customer is buying after the other, and hopefully this is an actual customer to customer trend. In reality, there is some underlying trend graph, how the customers are affecting each other. And on this trend graph, there are certain probabilities. In this case, for example, PAC is the probability that customer C will purchase the item given that customer A has already bought it before them. And this is exactly the trend probabilities that we're trying to go and estimate. Now, to build a model where we can understand these uh, trend probabilities, let's first look at the base model. Say we have these four customers and they bought in their respective periods. Uh, customer A bought in period one, and has the probability BAI1 as its purchase probability for that particular item. This is the probability that customer A buys item I at time one. Now this consists of two parts. One, the base purchase probability, QAI1, which talks about how likely is customer A to buy given the price, given the timing, given that they like the item, etc. And there is some systematic model error denoted by epsilon. Now we build these equations as well for all the other customers to understand how their demand looks like. Given this, we can now add customer trends. Let's say we had this trend graph of how the customers actually purchase. And what we can note is that customer A bought in period one 
and because there is no trend going on yet, we'll just have his base purchase probability Q. The second customer C, however, could have been influenced by customer A because they bought a period before them. And that's where we add this PAC term, the trend probability that customer C is more likely to buy now that customer A has already bought before them. We can write these equations as well for customers B and D. And then we have the basic idea of our model. Now, in its more general form, we can write it as follows. We have the purchase probability, BCIT, the likelihood that customer C buys item I at time T, which consists of two parts. First, the base purchase probability, which could describe the probability as a, in terms of its price, the location, seasonality, uh, item, brand, etc. And we have the trend-based purchase probability, which uh, denotes the, pro the customer to customer pr trend probabilities, dependent on whether customers have bought before them. And then we have this systematic model error. And this is something that we would like to minimize. We would like to find a Q and a P that causes the systematic model error to be as small as possible for the given data set that we have. Now, we could solve this model through maximum likelihood estimation. However, that's a very non-convex model because there's linear and non-linear parts in this model. Hence, we, we generate a pro approximate solution approach. First, we estimate the base purchase probability with a standard amount model, such as a logistic regression, for example. So we try to use a logistic regression model to describe how price, how seasonality affects our purchases. Then we remove the base purchase probability to get a standardized base purchase probability, standardized purchase probability. And finally, we can now estimate the customer to customer trend probabilities using a linear regression model. In particular, we use an IV model to ensure causality in our model. What we can show is that under mild assumptions that our estimators are consistent. What does this mean? Under these assumptions, if we have large enough data sets, we will be capturing the actual customer to customer trend probabilities. However, this is in theory. Let's see how it works in practice. We have data from a tier one fashion retail client of Oracle, which has around 600 stores and a revenue of one to $5 billion. This transaction data set tells us everything about the individual transactions made by their customers. And we have access to many features such as customer, item, time, store, and price attributes of each transaction. We can see that the set of transactions made by loyalty customers is large, even when we look at the state level. However, even though the data set is large, the actual purchases are very sparse. Uh, set somewhat differently, the number of times we see individual customers buy fashion items during particular time periods is very limited. Hence, we will aggregate over the customer item and time dimensions. In particular, we aggregate customers over their shopping location and spending levels. We aggregate items over the style. For example, different colors and sizes are recorded under the same style. And in terms of time, we aggregate all transactions during a week instead of looking at particular hours or days. After this aggregation, we can look at the forecasting accuracy for this practical data set. We measure accuracy in terms of the WMAP, the weighted mean absolute percentage error. The core of this metric is to look at the percentage difference between our predictions and the realized values. Then we look at the weighted mean of these percentage errors. With this weighting, we mean that errors for higher selling items are penalized more heavily, something that retailers care about, because retailers want the most accurate predictions for their best selling products. The table shows the WMAP for a few of the departments and states that we have tried our model on. We observe that the base logistic model obtains WMAPs between 43 and 54 percent, while adding the customer trend model achieves WMAPs of 36 to 48 percent. This is a relative improvement of 3 to 16 percent, which is a large gain in forecast accuracy by just adding the customer trend. Additionally, we can create graphs such as the stylized visualization that gives insights to managers on the trend patterns. With this, let's describe our prescriptive promotion targeting model. We want to understand who should we be giving a promotion to. Should it be this couple on the left? Should it be this lady in the middle? Or should we be giving promotions to multiple people at the same time? And should we even be giving most of our customers a promotion? 
The idea here is that we want to target promotions in order to maximize our expected profit. This means that we need to understand how to target the right customers with the right promotions for the right items and at the right time. Even though our goal is to maximize the overall profit, say over a quarter, we also need to incorporate business rules. Many corporations have rules on what their policies can be. For example, certain promotions might have to happen at specific time periods. Maybe there's a limit on the total number of promotions, or maybe there's no touch constraints, such that two successive promotions are not allowed to be uh, immediately after each other. We can formulate this prescriptive analytics problem as a mathematical optimization model, which is shown here. Our objective in this model is to maximize profits. This is subject to a number of constraints. Some of these constraints are formed by the aforementioned business rules, but we also include a constraint which dictates that demand follows our customer trend model. In addition, we can include back order shipping costs into our model to account for inventory issues if necessary. Unfortunately, this formulation is hard to solve. It is integer, nonlinear, and specifically NP-hard. Nonetheless, we are able to create an approximate algorithm for this problem. In particular, we can build the adaptive greedy algorithm, and it works as follows. Say we have our customers and the estimated edges. What we can do is we can calculate the potential of each customer when they get a promotion. How much potential revenue could they, uh, could they make for us? In this case, customer A gives us a potential of 4, customer B a potential of 2, and the potentials for customer C and D are 3 and 1. Now, if we are allowed to give up to two promotions, we might want to give our first promotion to customer A. They have the highest potential. Now, given that we have given a promotion to customer A, we have to recompute the potentials, because maybe customer A had a huge influence on another customer, and that potential is now completely gone. So we recompute these potentials, and again we give the uh, coupon to the highest potential customer, in this case customer B. Given that we could only give two promotions, we're not going to give a promotion to customer C or customer D. Now what we can show is that in our simulations, this algorithm obtains 98% of optimal profits on average. This is really, really amazing, and basically shows that such a simple, elegant algorithm can still gain a lot of the revenue that you could optim optimally get. To conclude, we can look at the historical promotion policy, given in red on the left graph, and also we can look at our proposed promotion policy, given in green on the right graph. Shifting from the current promotion policy on the left to the proposed promotion policy on the right, we can show that profits will improve by an order of 3.7 to 10.6% according to our backtests. Thank you for listening to our presentation. And if there's any additional questions that you might have about this, please feel free to ask. We are more than happy to answer.